Good evening, my dear friends. Good evening, Come on. Father. Good evening, Good evening. Father. Good evening, Father. Good evening, Father. I'm very happy today. You know why? Why? You always imagine. <laughs> of course, I was very happy when you were acting on that day. Yes. Today, I'm very happy. Something uh, very uh, interesting has happened in my activity today as a priest. Can you imagine what it could be? The adoration. <laughs> hmm? You ordained in this day? No, not for me. Oh, but what I did today. You ate dormo? <laughs> no, there was no dormo today. No. It was not eating. It is in my priestly activity. Oh, okay. Okay. Did you... you gave communion to somebody or? Uh, no, oh. it was in the church. Ah, in the church. It was after the mass. Oh. It was at two o'clock. <laughs> but, but after. No, it was at 2 o'clock. <laughs> Baptism. Oh. Baptism. Oh. You know, in 30 years, I'm 30 years now, priest. Today I had a baptism of the triplets. Oh, wow. yeah. that's nice. Two boys and one girl. And you know what name they have put? Yeah. yeah. Jesus, Joseph. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Oh. Nice. Yeah. So I have baptized twins many times. So I used to hold them together too, to get a photo. But this time I couldn't. I was scared. <laughs> I was scared that children might just slip, you know. So I told them, catch them, and we'll stand together. So that is the success of life. I want to continue the same thought. And today, it will be uh, habits and how we form it, how we are conditioned by it, and uh, if you are not careful, what can happen? How it can stop the progress? How it can be also detrimental to the personality development of a person? So I would just quote from Aristotle. We are what we repeatedly do. Akhran o mendi eva yobarnasheva kats Excellence is not an act, but a habit. So, what we repeat, we should analyze. So, for you and for me, my, I don't say lectures, my sharing is to go deep into myself and you go deep into yourselves and make an ex excavation, you know? and see who you are, what you are, how your dealings are, condition, control, uh, there are very many avenues of your life. <coughs> and uh, can you uh, go to the next one? Yeah. Yeah. Just see that. This person is just lucky. He touches dirt, turns into gold. And what is written in Arabic, Father Paul? I don't know exactly. Maybe um, it's not right. So. Yeah. The meaning is that we see sometimes some people, whatever they do, they are successful. Dari ida Dara Dara But is it true or not? Because yeah, but now we have to go deep into that. These things can happen, of course. Accidents are always accidents. We are not talking about accidents, but we are speaking about personality development. So, to change the dirt into gold, you need actions, and not only actions, Right actions, you know? So, a person who is training himself and goes in the right, also that one, is direction or direction. So, if you analyze your day-to-day -day activities and see how do you think, do things, to analyze that is easy. For example, do you pick up the right words when you speak to somebody? For example, I see Teresa. The first 
look at her, I can feel that she is happy. Okay. Then I to respond. So the right mind goes, you know. But suppose she told me, Father, your lecture will be on, for example, last month. She changed, okay? For example, I'm saying. And then I see her. Mm. <laughs> you see, the relation, the first look itself goes off track. So the words, very important. When I see her, she acted in the drama as an old lady, marvelous. If I tell her, oh, so keva. But she did that role so well. And the other one with the hunchback here. Some. Yeah. Some. Mashallah, I was thinking he is he's Paltik. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but so natural he did. So prepare the right action and in the right direction. So you know what you are doing and you control your words, your thoughts, your actions. And there is certain practice makes man perfect. Do you all agree with that? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, practice makes perfect. Yep. You learn from mistakes and then. No, the addictum. Practice makes man perfect. Is it true? No, not always. For example, I give you my own example. Your Umrah and Shamashe, huh? <laughs> they were practicing how Unita, one hymn. And oh. <laughs> the censorship has come. <laughs> and uh, he was making us sing. I was not singing. So he came and asked me, Father, why don't you sing? I told him very openly at his face, of course not, very calm, I said, because I don't want to learn the wrong thing. You see? The musician's dinner, you know it. When you are teaching music, if you don't know a hymn, the correct notes, you should not teach the wrong notes. Of course. Because to re no, direct that and to put the right note will have so much of difficulty. If you know a hymn, practice it. So practice makes man perfect, provided what you practice is the right thing. You are a footballer. If you don't learn or soccer the right movements, how to dribble the ball, you go like a bullock. You smash everyone, that is not the practice. That is dashing and breaking the legs of people. So practice always does not make man perfect. You practice the right thing, yes. So very many times in our life, we have to see what I am practicing. Is it the right thing? Then only it will lead you to perfection. So, you have to analyze what you teach, what you speak, what you behave to yourself, to others. Make an analysis and if it is the right thing, you can go on. A person who has the right habit does not repeat his mistakes. In Hanasha, Kult of Gianu, Artekro Vadele, is the Pavot Menchmaralit. When you know it's a mistake, for example, I say very personally to Father Paul, for example, we are living together, so, and I don't examples from others because they may get you know, embarrassed. So if there is something wrong in me, Father Paul tells me, Father Joseph, I think. It was better to have been like this. I think it's a mistake. And if it's a mistake, I should accept. But if I stand on my stubbornness and say, no way, you have to say, there is yes way, not my way, the right way. Yeah. Exactly. 
So, I should not repeat my mistake. If I do the mistake again, uh, this uh, during uh, uh, some test, from the rift of mountain, the camels, for example, jump to the other way to get some grass. But the air bay, the first one jumps, falls down. The second one also jumps, falls down. In a khmara layer, nothing. This is one has jumped, fallen down, he will return back. So, we should learn in our life not to repeat our mistakes. There, be careful not to follow your emotions, follow your reason. Sit down and look out your action and reflect to your own conscience. Say, stop, boy, you are wrong. Don't repeat. Say to yourself. Then your personality improves. But if you repeat the same mistake, you make the whole atmosphere, if you are living in a society, in a home, you make everybody restless. So, do not repeat your mistake. Cultivating good habits is like plowing the field. So, a farmer, he plows the field, so things come out. Even the things that remain from the last harvest, maybe potatoes, eh? or big tomatoes, or maybe some jewels, who knows. So you have to dig in, to cultivate the right habit, you have to take, plow into yourself, and see your motivation. You are motivated to do this to get what result. For example, a father at home tries with his child with anger to teach him a lesson. But after two, three, five, six times, the father sees this system does not work, he has to change. For example, he will change the motivation. Say, Bruni, Atka Bedrosi, Atka then he will try, and when he says, sees it goes the right way, he feels happy. Then the father says, Masha Allah, Bruni, he goes with energy. But if it's always anger, at the Nasha, they have it. That's my reputation. So it goes deep in his mind. Ah, but I'm a Nasha, they have it affects his mind. But your encouragement, or when he is falling down, catch him, lift him up. So he will not also repeat, he will not give you any difficulty for you. He will try by his own effort to be himself. So find the ways. Do not always take it for granted. If you have got five children, all the five are different. The first one may be very, because he got the first child, he got more attention, he's more calm. The second child, no. She or he wants a right. Mama, help me. The first one, Mama, can you give me mom? Second one, Allah, help me. So, he wants his right. The other one, because he got more attention since it was the first child, he or she has more patience. So the dad and the mom has to see that. Don't think every child and make them form their character in the same way. It needs energy. It needs effort. Maybe you are upset, you are tired, but don't forget that you are a father, you are a mother. Your children will represent you in the future. It needs continuity. To develop a good character, you need to continue. 
There are many people who start. For example, I saw during the drama here, at the interval time, they go to smoke. Eh? That's banana. <laughs> so if somebody smokes 30 cigarettes, he wants to remove that character. If 30 should come down to 25, 25 to 20, it should continue. If there is no continuity, there is no progress. There are some people who are addicted to drinks. You ask them, Runa, come on, Mr. So, how about the many lamas? My girlfriend did not talk to me. So, I'm sad, I drink. Another time you see him, he's very happy. How come? Yeah, we celebrate his birthday and I'm happy I'm drinking. <laughs> So he finds occasion to do what he wants. Not that he wants to be perfect. We all do these excuses. Therefore, it's still a pride, you know, Father. We are at Asia here. So, Shamashas, on the way from the cemetery, he asked, they asked me, Father, do Khranayit Daruita? Or uh, memorials, we, don't, we can eat meat, you know. Then I told them, of course I was joking. I told them, we'll go and see how the food is, then I tell you. <laughs> when, he, when we came here, it was nice food. But you know, uh, we three priests, we took only salat. <laughs> and Shamashas all took good food, you know. And today one of them told me, Father, you said, he would tell you, I told you, Friday is Friday. So, I joke with you, but when I come to my principle, I stand by it. Occasions are always there for us to not to be perfect. But a man of principle, a man of personality should continue. Stop is stop. When there is a red light, stop. Don't go. You will be penalized. You will lose your points. So, to have a deep personality, you need to continue. The other point that you need is courage. To have a strong personality, you need courage. Shajab. Hmm? Arabic? Yes. Also Persian, they say Shajab. You need courage to stand between, uh, before obstacles. When there is an obstacle, don't bend your head and lie down and die. See that as an opportunity to progress. <coughs> For example, you are having, ah, one of the young ones I saw, is having stomachache. Okay. Maybe a person who has stomachache, Always you'll feel so sorry, so emaciated, we didn't talk to anyone, lose, lose, any, like, you know, like the little kid, he wants always patting. Or headache, he wants to do a lot of work. You should tell yourself, oh, a big man like me, a little headache, let it go. I will do what I should do. We have courage. Turn that obstacle, that suffering, to renew your commitments. A person is committed to the real principle, he will stand. He will not escape. So be of courage. And it needs constant mental and physical exercise. I give you an example. Today, the final in Wimbledon is between Serena Williams and another uh, girl. Two, three years before, yeah, there was, uh, Serena had gone down very much. Many people thought her career as a tennis player is over. But after a few years, she has come back again. So it is constant mental and physical training. I can do it. I will do it. 
We had the Euro Cup final football. Uh, who won? Spain. For? Neil. 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 You all know Neil. Yes, because I remember, because I saw it to Shamash at 4.56. It's the only final I saw this year in here. But in the semi-final, the match was between Italy and Germany. And Germany had two goals, right? By whom? No, Germany lost. Yeah, sorry, Italy. Thank you. Italy had two goals. You know it was by whom? Mario Balotelli. Bravo, thank you. Balotelli. When I saw him playing, the, the name, I was surprised, you know? How oh, this man, very strong, like a black horse. Balotelli. Balotelli. <laughs> then I went through to find out who he is. I found a story, his life, which is it touched me. He was born in Africa and when he was two years old, he was very sickly. And you know, they had been children. So what did they do? They gave this boy to the orphanage, Yatim Khan. And everybody thought he would die. But an Italian family came and adopted him. Then they took him to the doctor, they took care of him, and he became famous and entered the national team. When a lot of money came, the parents went after him and said, I want, uh, uh, we want our son back. Then they were very fair people. They said, if your son wants to come back to you, it's up to him. So they talked with him. You know what he said? When I was small, when I was sick, you threw me out. Now that I have got name and money, you want me back. But for me, they are my parents. You generated me, but they loved me. If you want money, I can give you. But I will be their child. But to respect my country, I add one African name together with the family, Maria Barua Balotel. So imagine. He sticks to his principles. They loved me. It's a very big word. Experience. Self-esteem they gave me. I was an orphan. I was thrown out by you. I was nothing. So, this is the fact. The mental, and I saw when Italy lost, was the very sorrowful man when everybody was coming to take the, uh, this one, a presentation ceremony. So, but he remains to his principles. So, do not train yourself with dishonesty. Train yourself with truth. The more, you see, in life, to tell the first lie is very difficult. But to say the second lie is easy. The third one, afterwards you know, is like drinking water. So a honest person, a person to his own life, true to himself, trains in the right way. And we need such a strong character. So, success lies in the philosophy of sustain and abstain. Please. Yeah, sustain and abstain. How is it in Arabic? Can you just read? Okay. So whatever the habit that is in you, which is good, sustain. For example, you have trained yourself to be a man of patience, a woman of patience. You don't get distressed or annoyed by small things. Sustain. 
sustain the peace at home, sustain the love between the husband and the wife, try to promote it, say a good word to your wife, say a good word to Nandi, when he is behaving very well, you should encourage him. Then next time he will bring you more gifts. Thank you, Father. <laughs> oh, you are there. So sustain the good relation and abstain the opposite from the wrong things. So since they are very free, I will take their example. For example, Teresa knows Lamdi does not like Dolma. <laughs> So don't cook it every day. <laughs> I mean, abstain. Something which your husband, your children do not like, abstain from it. For example, your children do not like to see the angry face of the father. Abstain from it. So even when they make you a little angry, don't roar like a lion. Go into the fridge, uh, refrigerator, take some cold water, a soft drink and drink, and sit is So abstain from uh, uncontrolled anger. Uncontrolled anger is a kind of madness. At that moment, you may do something which will be so sorry for it afterwards, when your right mind comes to you. But what is broken is broken. What is killed cannot be brought back unless Jesus wants to make them resurrect. So sustain and abstain. Abstain from the detrimental things. Sustain what needs to be done. Today I have to give a lecture or share it better. There are so many things. I was anxious whether Father Paul has translated for me or not. I went for other programs. When I came back, I looked at my computer, ah, somebody has touched it, that means he has come. So as soon as came, I asked her, she said, no, but I just looked at it, I sustained. See? I feel the confidence. And he sustains my confidence too. When as two priests working together, we support and sustain each other. If he is sick, if he is not able to go, even if he tells me at the last moment, Father, I am a bit sick, I am in a uh, fair field, can you go to Madrid for the Holy Mass? I go. I abstain from saying no. I must will you do you go? Come on, then you should not go there. Shukati, say in the Tanan. So abstain. To keep a real personality, you should abstain from the wrong things. If you have got the character, each one knows by himself, more or less, he or she what is. If I know, I am a gluttonous man. You know what is gluttony? G-L-U-T-T-O-N-Y. That is, a person who cannot control as regards food. As soon as food is there, he's like the dog. Runs after it, okay? And Talgit, Mikurta Sikpeshi Yuman, he takes all together and puts it, but he cannot eat because there is a limit, you know. It can be till here, it cannot be more than that. So if I am gluttonous, I should abstain so that I know how much I take. Yeah, it's very necessary because even in our share, I see that. It's your food. If you cannot eat it, why do you waste it? It shows your character. That means you don't think about others. It's very clear. Let us not hide ourselves. There is a bird uh, which kikwan. Uh, uh, when there is a uh, snow and when the enemy comes to catch it, it puts his head into the snow and thinks nobody sees. <laughs> the wolf will come and eat it, that's all. 
So in these things, it's very clear, everybody knows you are gluttonous from the mind. So abstain is necessary. And in these things, use your reason, not your emotion. I need only this much. Okay. I take that much. If I need more, I can take again. So calculate. Use your reason. Don't go with the emotion. Where shall I see that? I jump forward. No. There are ten other people who also want to eat something. They only for them remains only the salad. Sometimes we see that at the table, when everything is at the end, those who come, nothing. Germans in anything. <laughs> so, you have to, so if you are a man of gluttony, think, abstain. If you are a volatile person, that means you have the psychology like the matchbox. You are just waiting somebody to say something, oh, blah, it gets fired up. If you are a volatile person, abstain from argument. Because only if you argue, you get hot, you get heated. So, don't be like that all the time. Abstain. Choice. Choice is yours. Because you want to have a wonderful personality. Your thinking pattern is important. You see, there is a philosopher called Kierkegaard. It's a German philosopher. You know? He says each person in his brain has a system like this, like pigeon holes, you know? Thinking patterns. So in our brain, we have got, for example, as soon as, uh, Father Paul, don't feel anything, okay? As soon as, as think of Father Paul, uh, oh, yeah, the Kacharuta comes. The Kacharuta. Kacharuta, Kyose. Then, Yes, early morning he goes very fast to the office. Then, so thinking pattern is there. Then, I see Father knows that. He has come uh, new. I know he moves slowly. You know, and he has got that beard. And he looks like that sometimes. <laughs> so, in our life also, we have got thinking patterns. Try to. Fill your pigeonholes of your mind with right positive attitudes. For example, I would say, Father Paul is punctual. Hey, sometimes uh, in the morning he is sleepy more. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a little uh, entertainment. Don't worry. Punctual, yes. He is responsible. Good. So when I am thinking pattern about him, positive, I appreciate it. But my thinking pattern, recommend Robin, oh, I mean negative. I will not look at him early morning when, he, when I see him. There won't be smile in my face. So it's very important. My thinking pattern, for example, I say all human beings are good. So your thinking is on goodness. That some rays we have. So be humble. 
as best you can receive the goodness of God, you are a good person. As far as you reject the goodness of God and fill yourself with bad things, you go on the line of Sapa. It's very clear. So our thinking pattern, each one of you and me, I should check myself. What is my thinking pattern? Is my thinking pattern positive? Is my thinking pattern negative? Or my thinking pattern is careless? There are some people. They, are, they don't care about anything. Baba, Tama, there is an accident. People need your help. So easy going. People die. People are happy. People are desperate. This one doesn't move at all. It's like the tortoise, yeah? Kra? What do you call him in Arabic? No. His shell is very thick and nothing moves. Our thinking pattern should be sensitive to others, to understand others. If I look at, uh, uh, for example, that old man from Jerusalem, I see him very sad, I should ask him, <laughs> what happened? Is your ship sunk into the depth of the sea? He would say, no father, I have this problem. But if I don't care for him, if I don't see the sadness on his face, my personality is yes. That means you are not able to relate. Human being is a relation. Therefore, we need to respond. Form habits that give you the personality. So our thoughts lead us to actions. And actions form our character. So if you want to have a real character, like the Zoroastrians, that there is a religion called Zoroastrianism. They have three pillars of their religion. Has anybody heard about it? Yeah, Zardushti, yeah. They have three pillars. Iran, before Islam invaded the country, the people there were Zoroastrians. They have three pillars in their religion. Endorenik, <coughs> Kerdorenik, Goftorenik. That means good thought, Good word, good action. So, our thinking pattern, if it goes always on the level of uh, the, the Nik, Niki, Nik in Persian means goodness, Thot. It goes back to the first chapter of Genesis, the Holy Bible, which God says, Whatever he created was good. So in each one of us, there is goodness. So basic, intrinsic existence and essence of man is being good. If something goes wrong, that means it is not educated, it is not trained, it has not taken the pains, to go in the right direction with the motivation and the courage and the continuity that we need. So, think rightly, speak rightly, and do rightly. So, by repeating that, it becomes a habit. When I repeat every day morning to get up at 6 o'clock, have the meditation, have a walk, do the gardening, it goes well. The same me can be just the opposite. No motivation, no continuity. Say that me shall answer with the man. He doesn't see me. That spoils you. God sees you, you see yourself. So your motivation, your personality, we learn by doing. So be courageous enough to do the right thing. Let others do the wrong thing. But I will stand, I will be constant in my decision. I will be honest. That's my 
thinking pattern. Good habits are hard to come, but to live with it is easy. Bad habits come easy, but are hard to live with. Good habits, for example, to respect others. You are stamped over the feet of someone. Immediately say sorry. To live with such a character is easy. But the one who has bad ha habits, they come very easy. To smoke, to say rubbish, is very easy. But you and others to live with that is very hard. Imagine a person in a home, supposing that the woman or the father or the mother, both are tatman, they crumble at everything. Imagine the fate of the children. How can they tolerate? How can they have breath? Because what of breath they take to themselves is evil. It's a bad thing. And to live it, and though they themselves are not happy. Not only the children, not only the parents. And those who see it, then, if it's a very parnasha, are khasit min tapa So bad habits, people deter you. They don't want to have a relationship because they don't want to be disturbed. And they have the right for it. If you are an energy sucker in a negative way in a community, everybody will check you out. Because people want to live. Life is precious. So you and me, we have no right to spoil the life of others. So we get conditioned. Our habits make us conditioned. It's a psychological process whereby we get used to specific events occurring in association with others. I give you a simple example. It's called, it is written there. Ah, oh, where is the, where is the, ah, yeah. Indian experience elephant. I took this because I know you like uh, Indian films and Indian elephants. It's a very interesting thing. I went to a training camp of the elephants. I wanted to learn how they train this huge animal, you know. And first they told me how they get the elephants from the forest. They dig a big pit and they put leaves and trees, wooden things over there. So the elephant, you know, goes eating like that and falls down. Falls down. Then, how do they bring the elephant out? They dig uh, uh, the trainers. They have got coach, huh? coaches, elephants. They come and uh, dig the ground and the mud goes down. When the mud goes down, they put uh, wood, strong mud. So slowly, slowly, the elephant who is down comes up. And when the elephant comes out, these four elephants surround this one and take that elephant, which is wild, to the training camp. So, and every day they have training. The uh, coach, there's a head uh, elephant who teaches the small or the big one is caught. And if it doesn't obey, gives one this cartoon, you know the trunk and in six months this elephant will obey whatever his master says. Come with me, he will come. Carry this, he will carry. Drink this, drink. Let's go to the pond to uh, drink water and to be clean, yes. But what touched me was the training of the small elephant. And in the training camp, they had many uh, kids also. And they're very funny. They will catch you everywhere. They want to play, like children. No difference at all. They will uh, not violent at all. Small they are. So, how do they train? They tie a 
big chain and tied to a very strong tree. The elephant is small, no? It doesn't, it doesn't like to be tied. Like when you bring a small dog at home, you want to put the chain, it will be started barking and all kinds of things. And the elephant starts the same. It will scream, it will pull, maybe it gets wounded. Till one day the elephant makes a decision or understand this kind of pulling is not going to help. So I stand still. I obey. And later, you know, it can carry one ton of weight. You just a rope is tied to a normal tree. The elephant, when it is tied, it will be very docile. So it has been conditioned, trained. So even a small rope can tie it, it will not pluck it out and go. You see? It gets conditioned and it, somewhere it is tied, that's enough for it. Unless it gets mad, because that's a different thing. So it gets, with a small thing, it can be tied. So no tugging, no pulling. So it's full grown elephant. So, we are conditions by, don't think we are different, what we read, what we see. So, I just would uh, hurry up because I know the time is running fast. We are conditioned by the atmosphere, by well, the circumstances. For example, you analyze yourself. What kind of movies do you like? And for when there is a serial, you run from your uh, work to just sit down and watch. And also the music. For example, some all like romantic music. One likes heavy metal. One wants to, you know, like, <laughs> they like that, you know. So it's all your condition. If you don't listen, you don't. They are not at peace. It's like some of the ladies, I can see when there is rosary, so Vardiya. When they start, after the second, this one, they are sleeping. <laughs> so they are accustomed, you know, conditioned. If they start praying, they start sleeping. So this is, happens in every kind of life. Then, so we also, companies, not companies who produce things, the friendship that we have, just analyze what kind of companies do you like. Only people who praise you or people who say the truth. Weak people, weak personalities are afraid somebody who is around him who is talented, who is capable, he will try to avoid them. Because he thinks when they are in his presence he feels small. So we have to see our own friendship, what is this? Or there are some people, when they come together, they have only negative things to speak about others. And they enjoy. That shows their personality, their negative themselves. So these are very important. <coughs> or there are some groups, when they come, they have only dirty jokes. Nothing positive, nothing. Uh, romantic, aesthetic comes. <laughs> so this one shows, you know, Jesus said a wonderful word, where there is the dead body, the vultures come. So each person can understand what is, is it? Like the vulture, is the dead body, which attracts the vulture. So my talking, my spirit, my thinking pattern, the friends around me will be like that. So if you want to know someone, look also who friends they have. They have. So these are all important. Don't think life is just goes on. No. You have to make it as it should be, with the right attitude. So choose the right things and put the input. If it is good, the output also will be good. If I fill my mind with positive ideas, my talk, my look, 
my action will be positive. If my thinking is bad, when I look at you, I wouldn't look at the uh, extreme simplicity or the purity of a personality. So it is in you. Your input, you feel, to be very practical, I say, a girl comes to me. If I am a good priest, I should consider her, if she's small, like a little sister. If she's married as a mother, that trains, that's my thinking pattern. I will have now no bad intentions or ideas. They are like my family, my sister, my mother, my elder sister, my younger sister. This is the spirituality of Christianity. That's why Jesus says, you are brothers and sisters. That's why you don't have hijab. In Islam is different. A woman is looked in a different way. Jesus says, you are brothers and sisters. So, I look at you. A true Christian looks in that way. So, my input is that. And my output is also being equal to that. So, when your religion teaches you violence, you will be violent. When your religion teaches you patience, love, you will do that. But when your religion, religion tells you, you can kill for your religion, <coughs> that spoils civilizations and nations. So, see what is the input. Then you will have the output. You are like a big, beautiful, powerful car. You put the petrol, you drive it. But, if you are not the right and good driver, it can end you up in crash and death. So, be the driver of your life. The right petrol input. Then go smoothly. You will reach your destination. So, I would and we all should try. Analyze your habits. Analyze where they stand. Where are the influences, conditioning, and do not just repeat to be on the wrong track. Practice perfectly the right thing and enjoy your life and be happy and you'll be the true. That's it.